Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, today I'm talking about Placebo, and very specifically their song Nancy Boy. I bought that single. Um, it was released in 1997. I liked it at the time. I haven't heard it for years now, but uh, I'm curious to know whether it holds up to the rigours of the fickle mistress we call... Time. Justin Hawkins rides again. Time again. So, released in 1997, it was the fourth single from their debut self titled album. Um, and the single version is uh, re-recorded. It's notice noticeably different from the album version. I never heard the album version, so I wouldn't know. It contains themes of drugs, uh, sex, mm, gender confusion, uh, and uh, bisexuality. It became their breakthrough single, peaking at number four in the UK singles chart a month after the single's release. Brian Molko, the singer, reportedly said, Sonically, we tried to capture a kind of drug-induced sexual rush. Placebo formed in London in 1994. Their music has typically been labelled as alternative rock. Um, their influences include David Bowie, Can, Iggy Pop, and the Stooges. <laughs> Sorry, Iggy Pop and the Stooges, Sonic Youth, The Cure, Pixies, Nirvana, The Smiths, PJ Harvey, Depeche Mode, and Nine Inch Nails. I think I can hear all those things in Placebo's music. That's a good, you know, comprehensive list, I feel. <laughs> What note do you think that is? Ah, oh, shit, it would be a detuned thing, wouldn't it? Oh no, it's not, it's Alcoholic. Alcoholic, Now, one of the reasons why I bought this single um, wasn't for this song. It was because one of the B-sides was a cover of Big Mouth Strikes Again by uh, The Smiths, you know. And they've cleverly changed some of the lyrics in it. So in the original, um, Morrissey was talking about, um, and now I know how Joan of Arc felt. She goes, now I know how Joan of Arc felt as the flames rose to a Roman nose and her hearing aid started to melt or her Walkman started to melt. And I think when... When Placebo did it, they changed some of the sort of things that were melting in the flames with Joan of Arc to more modern bits of technology, like... Because um, it was intended as an anachronism anyway when the original lyric was done, and then they sort of doubled down on that by... I think they said something like, Disc Man instead of Walk Man. Remember the Disc Man? Um, or they might have said... Oh, I've forgotten the rest of it. It doesn't matter. They said something modern, like uh, iPod. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was iPod. Or River. Remember the iRiver MP3 player? Well, By the way, it doesn't stick around. So it does that chorus and it's straight back into the next verse. And it's the, the way the sort of verse progression starts, it sort of feels like it's going to be a blues thing, you know, where it would go... But it doesn't. It goes... To the B flat. And back to the F. Is it that? Ah, oh, back to the C. So it goes F, C. That almost does that blues thing I was hoping for. But then it descends one semitone into this evil B. Six semitones away from the original F. Oh, that's evil! <laughs> Conjuring the devil much! And then, uh, I think it goes to that. Yeah, back to the uh, B flat. Much more comfortable territory there. Nice. He's got that lovely hairstyle where the the it's neither it's not quite um, it's not quite collar length. It's just underneath that. My daughter has a haircut like that sometimes. It looks, looks like a little French girl. It's lovely! Um, even on Brian, yeah, on Brian Molko, it looks lovely. It's a nice hairstyle. Right. That's, the, that's my favourite feel in it. I don't think it does it on the first chorus, but there's this bit where it goes... Um, 
go boom, boom, boom. Like, check it out. And obviously he goes for the symbol behind his head, but we've talked about that before. Whoa. Weird bit. Just, uh... I think it goes to a D, right? So, <laughs> the middle eight section is this. Whatever it is. But it's an excuse to have some you know, sirens and stuff played weirdly on guitars. It's a musical inter interlude, but the kind of thing where they probably haven't spent too much time writing that. It's just a, it's just a wig out, really. A, a, a sort of noisy wig out. Yeah, that's good bass playing. So when uh, the bass player gets to that note here, so. when he plays that note, he's he's the only one providing. No, okay, that's not true. In the melody, you get this uh, major third. So your ear knows that the F power chord is indeed F major, not this, not minor, this. So when he goes here, he's doubling down on that major third on his way to the uh, B flat. It's a really mean sound, isn't it? It's like, uh, it's not even played that aggressively. It's, it is played with a plectrum, but it's kind of like just got the right, just the right amount of growl on that bass sound. It's awesome. It sits there and holds the whole track together on its own, really, in that last verse. It's a really great guitar sound. It probably sounds like it might be either an emulator of or something that's inspired by the sound of the diesel amplifier. Um, it's the one that Weezer uses as well. It's a, a lot of those guys that, that just plow through with uh, power chords to use that because it's just takes your face off and tells you exactly what you need to know about the song. You know, it's great. Is that feel again? It's just some really great drumming on this. When you hear that fill and it's on the dance floor and you're, you're like at a sort of 90s indie alternative rock disco and they play that, remember to do this. So like when it's playing. Yeah. Go, go. Striding purposefully around the stage, all kinds of weird sex and death stuff happening. You know, that's the placebo experience in a nutshell, isn't it? You would never hear these phrases. In the, in the verse, because it's sort of, it's all very much set in F major. But then when it goes, and when the chorus starts, it goes F to this note, which is the uh, E flat. It's two semitones down from the root, which makes it the minor seventh. And it suggests that it changes key at that point. So in the choruses, I think the key is different. It's like... And that is B flat, or this, C minor. Yeah, whatever it is, it definitely changes. Because you wouldn't hear that note, really. And that's, you know, the only sort of colour change you need, really. The, the, the dynamics don't increase too much when it gets to that point. Because it's all about the, the nature of the... Um, the melody and, and where it's sort of where it lives really um, harmonically it completely changes 
And that's the duality of the song, really. And then there's that bit in the middle. It's just a rest. It could almost be a rest, really. Brilliant stuff. I think that's stood the test of time, don't you? It's, it's really awesome. Check out the B-side if you get a chance. The, their cover of Big Mouth Strikes Again is really good. Yes, well done, Placebo. I know it's been 25 years, but still, well done. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and watch one of these two videos. Look after yourselves, guys, and uh, be responsible. <laughs>